All right, folks, John Henning here with the Franchise Radio Show. You can reach us online at FranchiseRadioShow.com. Today we're joined by a special guest, Tim Ede. He's the operations manager over at Swift International. Tim, thanks for jumping on with us today, man. We appreciate it. Hey, no worries. Thanks a lot, John. I appreciate your call. Yeah, yeah. Now, before we get into the business stuff, mm-hmm. I always like to just talk a little bit about uh, you know the personal side of things. You know, people do business with people, right? And so mm-hmm. I want to give our listeners just a chance to maybe just get a, a one- or two-minute overview of you personally. Let us know, you know, where you're from, where you live, that kind of thing, maybe just one or two fun personal things. And uh, just tell us, who, who's Tim? Sure, not a problem. Uh, well, First of all, you can tell by the accent that uh, I'm not from around these parts. I'm uh, a New Zealander, as they call it. We're a Kiwi. And just for everyone listening out there, that's not named after fruit. That's named after bird. So you can look that up. <laughs> so <laughs> I people, people, know that. Okay. No, no. Exactly. People, people think we're offending ourselves. We're very proud to call ourselves Kiwis. Uh, and this is a point of distinction. We're not Australian, okay? Just to remember that, okay? So <laughs> New Zealanders are New Zealanders. It's, not, it's a different country. We're not Australians, right? That, Australia is full of desert and dangerous animals. New Zealand is full of beautiful scenery and kind people, okay, and right. great food, great right. food and wine. Now, I don't want to wait this, the uh, the New Zealand tourism uh, advertising podcast, but yeah. I was going to say you got to plug in there for tourism, right? Yeah, exactly. If you get a chance, go down, go down under. Yeah, and um, so and I, uh, you know, moved to America twelve years ago on July the fourth. That's actually the, my date of uh, arrival here in America. And um, wife and one son who's grown up pretty much in America. He would think of himself as a New Zealand America, I guess, and. Uh, He's busy spending my money playing hockey. So if you're ever up in the, the Connecticut way and you're watching the Connecticut Chiefs play, he's a right-sided defenseman for the Connecticut Chiefs right now. Oh, look at that. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. Big uh, big hockey uh, over in New Zealand, huh? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand's all rugby. It's all, they used to, this is actually how they used to describe New Zealand, rugby, racing, and beer, but it's a little bit more sophisticated than that now. But, yeah, rugby's, rugby's the big sport. I used to joke with him. I said, you can only play hockey to toughen you up so you can play rugby, but he ignored so my advice. you can advice. move into the big leagues, right? Yeah, but he doesn't want to play rugby. <laughs> he just wants to play <laughs> hockey. He wants to wear a helmet and pads. I don't get it. That's great. That's great. Now, um, you know, we'll jump into the company stuff here in just a minute, and you can mm-hmm. tell us, you know, what you got going on. But how did you originally get into franchising? I mean, nobody ever wakes up in the morning and just says, Today's day, I'm getting in franchising, right? Oh, no, that's a that's a good question because uh, I was actually talking to one of my staff today about it, and the reality of it was that um, I wasn't planning to get in the franchise, and I actually got uh, reached out by Yuri Kovalenko, who's the very dynamic owner of the business here. He actually reached out to me, and uh, we just started a conversation, and you know, meetings after meetings, and you know, I could see his vision and his passion, uh, him and his his good friend and partner had set up uh, the staffing business here and they were franchising it and they wanted someone to come in as an operations manager. And so really what it was, what got me in hook was Yuri's charisma and his vision and his excitement and energy. And, you know, uh, that's really what it was. And now I'm sort of going along for the ride and really enjoying it. And it's actually a, I think for anyone out there, it's it's a fantastic uh, industry to be in. Now we mentioned the company in there, Swift International. Walk mm. us through exactly what uh, how everything works on that side of it with the company and what you guys have going on. Sure, no problem. So um, so SI Staffing is based here in Baltimore. That's actually like the big uh, staffing uh, agency that they set up. So Yuri and Andre um, Andre Gustav. They said at about, I think it was about 12 years ago, probably about the same time as I was arriving here in America. They were setting this company up as a Baltimore Bay staffing agent. They got that very successful. And then, you know, I think probably about two years ago, they decided to, hey, look, we want to keep growing and, you know, we want to look at franchising. And they've done a lot of research in that. So they created a company called Swift International, which is, in essence, the franchising arm of that. And so that's the company that I work for that basically goes out and seeks franchisees. And, and what we talk about is, you know, everything we've learned and everything we do, you know, they'll admit that, you know, they, they tried a lot of things and now they've kind of perfected their model. But whether it's around the payroll company they use or the applicant tracking software or all the various things they've got that they perfect here in Baltimore, that's what we roll out now to our franchisees. So it's kind of how it works with Swift International sort of being that franchising arm. And so yeah. I, in some ways, I've got to put in both camps because I've obviously the offices where I'm based here. So I see day-to-day all the good stuff that they're doing as well. Okay, great. Now, you know, there's a lot of staffing companies out there. What is it that's mm-hmm. unique about your franchise company, uh, Swift International, that really separates you guys from the rest of the industry? What are the what are the big differentiators? Yeah, so, I mean, it's a good question, right? And everyone's going to say, hey, you know, we, 
we guarantee this and guarantee that. So I actually talked to what uh, I was dealing with one of our um, banking associates, and the, uh, you know we're looking to them and getting funding for one of our franchisees. And this is what he told me: what makes us stand out. And he just said, "Look, I am just incredibly impressed with the the level of support and the level of skin in the game that you guys seem to have with your franchisees." And let me explain mm-hmm. that. So, you know, he his basic view was he sees a lot of franchises and in essence what you get is you get the manual, you get uh, the, the brand and you get a training program and then go for it, kid, and then just start paying me money. Whereas what we do is, you know, we we basically sell for you to start with, so we actually have our own sales team actually going out and getting you clients. And that's, you know, that's really critical, getting you some, you know, you get one or two big clients to start with that's going to build your business up. We sure. give you our own business consultant who basically works almost like, to start with, it's almost like you know every day in your business, hiring your recruiter for you, training your recruiter. We when we bring in uh, like a recruiter for you, we actually train them here in our Baltimore office. They come and work with us here in the recruiting pit, recruiting, uh, getting hands on from here. So we make sure we we basically certify them for you before they come out and work for you. So that's really important. Uh, but even within that, you know, we then. Uh, our business partners that we have, whether it's uh, Tricom, who's our payroll partner, or whether it's, as, as I say, whether it's a um, marketing business, we work very closely with them and and our franchises. So, you know, just take another example with Tricom. You know, they're a payroll partner. I don't know if anyone's ever worked with a payroll company, but there's a lot of hoops and things to go through. We don't just leave you as a franchise alone to deal with all that. You know, we're in there checking your data. We will make sure that you're set to go every week. You know, we kind of follow up on that, make sure that there's no hold up because we know how important it is that everyone gets paid and we don't want you to have any delays. So, you know, we are we are working behind the scenes at all times to make sure that you go from, we always talk about this, you're going to start out as a startup, you're then going to be a developing franchise, and then when you're a stable franchise, that's probably when we'll, we'll finally sort of, you know, Step away. A bit like in the same way I do with like raising my son, the hockey player, right? You, know, <laughs> you start out, you start out, hey, look, you're all hands on and you know, you're changing the back, doing everything. <laughs> and then he gets off and then he's at school, which is kind of like, hey, now, now he's developing and you're, you're going to teach, teach your parent interviews and you're teaching him maths. And then eventually he gets to the point where he is now where I look at his maths homework that he gets or that he got in his last year of high school. And I, go, oh, God, I have no idea. You're on your own now, son. And that's kind of what we like to do with our franchises is build them up and build them up and then get them to that point where they are growing and they're coming to us now and saying, hey, you know what, I love what I'm doing. Let me buy another territory. I want to expand. Yeah, right. and, and, and then so then what we're doing for them is not teach them how to run a staffing business because they know that. We are helping them pick out a territory. This is where the office should go. Oh, by the way, we've done some research. These are the clients that we're going to go after for you. Mm-hmm. And then we can roll that in. So that's probably that's probably the big difference. And that actually is also reflected in the way that um, SI Staffing operates. So SI Staffing has always been a local-based staffing agency that actually prides itself in being very hands-on. You know, actually, you know, when you hire people, we meet them there at the at the site and you know introduce them to the people that right. we're working for. Right. You know, we we have you know client relations managers that make it a point that you know they go and visit clients, even if we've got a steady business. We, we visit clients you know, every week, you know, personal visits. Make sure they're happy. Make sure you're going on. So it's always been the, the mantra of SI staffing. It's a very personal, white glove treatment for its clients. We kind of take that on with our franchisees as well, make it a very personal. Yuri likes to say, you know, when you come on board as a franchisee, it's like we're married. Welcome to the family. <laughs> right, right. Now, you, you know, they uh, they got to get that accent down, though, you know. You <laughs> now, let me ask you, as you mentioned before we started recording the episode here, mm-hmm. something, you know, a little bit different. You guys are working into the model now. Yeah. Just are you willing to share a little bit of that, you know, with our audience here so they can kind of get a preview of what you guys are looking to do here a little bit different? Yeah, I, hey, thank you for that because that's a, that's a good point. So what we've realized is right now the staffing agency is – it probably at its strongest it's been in a very long time. I think people are aware of the fact that there's a real shortage out there for labor. People are struggling to find the right people and match them up. Right. So there's real growth in staffing. And part of what obviously we need to do is get staffing franchises started quickly and earning quickly. And one thing that we've decided we're going to do, and you know, we're looking, first of all, locally for where we are here, sort of around you know, in uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware, um, Virginia, is we're going to create what we call joint ventures. So we're going to basically open up companies, um, staffing companies, that we are going to pay for all the upfront costs. Uh, we're going to, you know, we'll have a parent company that actually owns them, but we'll bring on board somebody like an owner-operator 
maybe mm-hmm. somebody, for instance, that's a sales manager right now in a staffing company and who wants to set up their own company. Well, hey, they come on board, they work with us. You know, they, they're basically earning a profit share as part of what they're doing actually working with the company. And we have a preset price, you know, which we right. tell them going in, this is how much it's going to be. And after three months, you know, they'll see the clients we brought on board. They will see the revenue we're bringing in. And they'll have sort of between three to six months of doing that and viewing it to make that decision. And look, at the end of that six months, they still don't want to buy it. That's fine. We'll, at that stage, we'll have a, a business that's generating, you know, uh, $50,000, $60,000 a, um, a week in terms of revenue, hopefully. Uh, and then, you know, we will sell it anyway. We've got a you know, part of our business model. We sure. can sell existing franchises. But the goal is to bring these people in and then sell it to them and then they flip them and that becomes you know, part of the franchise. So in some ways, it's kind of like, hey, look, it's a way that we'll also help leverage funding for you so you, know, you don't have to be, have, have to have any sort of deep pockets to buy a franchise, but you bring your skill, your hard work, uh, your ambition, your, uh, your desire to own the, the profits of your own labor. You come and work with us. And then you have this the staffing franchise at the end of the show for it. So that's what we're doing, and we, we're launching that in the new year. Our first target is going to be up in uh, Philadelphia, uh, oh, but we yeah. have others. And that's because we have clients, national clients, that we can bring in sure. in Philadelphia and Delaware and uh, D.C. and in Virginia. We've already got the clients almost set up, so it's, it's pretty easy, turnkey. We're going to open the office. We're going to hire the recruiter. Our local sales team out of Baltimore will sell for them. Uh, we have the operations support already. We're just looking for people with, that are willing to come in, as I say, you know, ambitious people, people with uh, a desire to, uh, you know, own own a business rather than be an employee of a business. Well, that's interesting. You said the air first target area. That's actually I only live about 15 minutes from there, so I'm just. <laughs> I'll bring you in. <laughs> right, you. right. No, I'm yeah. a, I'm, mm. I'm all set there. I, I've got mm. the you know whole bunch mm. of balls in the air, plates spinning mm. as we speak. So <laughs> let me ask you because you you brought up the you led right into my next question here, which mm. is the the target franchise owner. Like mm. there's a. There's a lot of different types yeah. of entrepreneurs out there that want to do a lot yeah. of different types of things, and mm-hmm. obviously not everybody's the right fit for every company. But exactly. tell us, you know, briefly, like who who is your target person that would make like a really good fit for what you guys are looking for? Yeah, uh, again, you know, good insight question because you're quite right that uh, you know there is a certain type of entrepreneur that just wants to do everything their own way and just just go run out. That's probably not for us. You know, we're looking for the people that hey. First of all, they've got to have ambition. You know, we're looking for people that actually want to take something and grow it. You know, they're looking for, they're not comfortable with making $100,000 a year. They want to make 200. When they're making 200, make 400. Mm -hmm. You know, and and again, you know, they want to keep growing. So that's the first thing. They've got to be ambitious. I think the second thing is, and uh, this is actually some advice that I heard from Elon Musk. These are going to be people that are uh, self-motivated. And what I mean by that is if I need to be a cheerleader for them to buy a business, Probably not yep. the right person. You no, know, right. if if you need somebody every day, you know, to phone you up and say, "Hey, you've done a great job, well done." It, owning a business is not for you, and you know, you need to go work in a business where you can have a manager that pats you on the back every day. You've got to be self motivated. You've got to be the person that, hey, I inter- your internal drive mechanism says, "I want to be number one. I want to make money." So that kind of combines the ambition and that together. And probably the third part of it is, is you've got to be able to, hey. Be really clear and disciplined because being in the staffing agency is very much a disciplined thing. I always sort of say, if you're the kind of person that manages their day via their email, just seeing what latest thing comes up, <laughs> not really ideal for us. You know, you need to be somebody that because we've got great systems. You know, we have a great you know computer uh, uh, software that we use, Aiken, which you know we've got, built our whole staffing agency around it. You can basically live with them at post to. Uh, uh, the various job boards, it automatically brings people inside our system. You do all your papers onboarding with that. You set up payments, everything, everything all within our system. You learn that. We teach you the right way to recruit. We teach your recruiters the right way to, to get rewarded. We teach our salespeople the same thing. So, hey, we give you all the systems. We take care of all the annoying things like payroll. And, you know, we give you the support. With We've got lots of pre uh, uh, third-party vendors that we've vetted whether it might be for marketing or whether it might be accounting services. So we do all that. Hey, you just need to be focused on making money and being really disciplined. So that's kind of that's the kind of that's the kind of franchisee that we're looking for. Good deal. What's the uh what's a day in the life of the franchise owner? You know, every franchise operates a little bit differently mm-hmm. and everybody has different models. What mm-hmm. what does a typical day look like for a franchise owner? 
so we always talk about this is that you're an owner operator, right? That's mm-hmm. kind of what we're looking for. So I want to emphasize those two parts. So first of all, as an owner, uh, day-to-day, it's uh, supervision or uh, um, really what you're doing is you're reviewing. So you need to understand daily, weekly, what's my cash flow? Uh, what does my balance sheet look like in terms of you know, our, really outstanding debts? Hey, mm-hmm. What's the productivity of my particular employees, right? So, and we've got reporting for that. So, so that's a governance thing as as an owner that you need to be aware of. And you know, it's really there's some daily cadence, definitely some weekly cadence that comes around that that we've set up. And then obviously once a month we sit down between you, your financial advisor, and we review your P and L, we review your cash flow statements and your balance sheet, and we make adjustments together as a business. That's that's just standard governance as an owner, as right. an operator. What you need to be able to do is you need to understand what your recruiting team is doing, so understanding the typical metrics, are they making the right number of calls, are they sending out the right number of text messages and emails, are they booking the right number of interviews for that day, what's their success rate in in terms of booking an interview to converting that to an actual hire. At the same time, you need to understand the sales process, and so you're, you're aware of, hey, again, the same thing, how many phone calls are they making today, how many meetings have they set up today, so it becomes, that becomes like a daily thing. And these are reports that you can look at on your computer, but also by being part of it. And then you also need to understand the client relation manager part, which is equally as important. Hey, how many of our existing clients have you visited today? How many of them have you grown? Hey, how many people did you sit to the site today? So you, you see all that, but equally within that day in a life, you might have to jump in. Hey, my recruiter is caught out sick today. You know what? I can jump on the phones and I can uh, make some appointments for tomorrow. Or more importantly, hey, someone's coming in today to do an interview. Hey, it's very simple and easy. I've already got the scripts. I know how to do this. I've got it covered. Uh, Equally, it might be from a day in our life, which is probably the big thing we push, is being the ambassador for the brand. We push our franchisees to spend a lot of time networking in that community, whether it's the Sure. Um, you know the business uh, business associations, or just going out having lunches, because by you, you in essence, while we are SI staffing, and SI staffing has a strong brand presence, uh, you yourself are the ones that are really going to put the value behind that brand when they see you and your local community. So whether it, it might be down in Eastern Shore, or whether it's out in Montana, or whether it's you know it's in Bethesda, or you know, Philadelphia, or uh, New Jersey, all these places. Uh, the brand is only as good as the owner and what they're willing to push themselves that's out for. So that's the last piece that they have to be doing is networking and getting out and with the business associations and making sure people know who they are, uh, make sure they understand what they stand for. That's what I started out with there too, Tim. That's exactly mm-hmm. where I was going with that was, uh, yes. you know, people do business with people, right? Yes, that's, exactly. that's how it works, you know, in, in business. Yeah. Uh, I don't care who you are. If you don't like somebody, you're probably not doing business with them. <laughs> you're right there. So, you're right there. Hey, tell me about the top misconceptions, myths. What do people think when they come to you that that's something that you educate them on and they're like, wow, you know, okay, I didn't realize that. What is the, what's the big misconception or myth when folks first start talking with you? I think probably the big misconception around the staffing agency is they don't understand that we take care of all the, uh, the payroll taxes and stuff like that. So I used to be on the other side. Uh, I used to work mm-hmm. for a large corporation and we'd use staffing agencies and I'd see the markups and think, oh my goodness, that's a lot of money. But what I didn't realize was is that when you pay somebody, I mean, you pay someone $10 an hour, and in essence, there's another buck fifty sure. of that that's going in workers' compensation and you know all the payroll taxes associated with, not to mention actually the the cost of your own internal payroll department for cutting the checks and doing all that, which is... so. That's probably the big, biggest misconception in the staffing industry is just how, uh, how valuable like, staffing agencies can be for companies. That, hey, it's not just, hey, I, you know, hey, like, I just don't have time to hire anybody. It's like there is a huge administrative cost and you know, headache involved in hiring people that we can take away from you and we'll own it ourselves. And, of course, it's like anything. We specialize in it. You know, we we right. have the relationship with a payroll company. We're really good at that. We have the applicant tracking software, which is really good for cat. You don't have that. You know, when you're a big corporate, that's, you know, when I worked for big corporations, we were good at, you know, making ice cream or pizza or, uh, you know, selling milk or, uh, you know, all the corporations that worked for. We were good at doing that. We weren't good at running staffing. We didn't know that. That wasn't our core competency. 
And so you just don't realize all this, like you said, you don't understand all the stuff that goes into making a sausage. When you see behind the curtain, you see all that. And yep. then you go, well, that's really complicated. And then we say, hey, it's really complicated. But once you understand the systems, it's really seamless. So it's kind of like, hey, there's a lot that goes on behind the staffing. If you've got the right systems and processes and people are trained well, it's fine. But if you haven't, man, that's a, that's a lot of work it's going to take you to, to do this. What are some other hot areas? You mentioned Philadelphia market. You're looking for somebody there. Give me two yeah. or three other areas throughout the U.S. that you're really hot on right now. Yeah, so really hot on right now, obviously, Virginia. And this is staying local. It's Virginia and northern Virginia, Delaware. Uh, mm-hmm. We've got a lot of actually interest right now in Delaware, and that, that territory may, in fact, uh, be sold out sooner rather than later, just in terms of what we can do there. Uh, Maryland is pretty much take, uh, taken for now, so there's nothing left in Maryland. Uh, New Jersey is the next area where there's obviously plenty of growth around there. Uh, there is opportunities in New York State. There's a bit more heavy regulatory, so we just get mm-hmm. cautious of, in terms of New York State. And then the other big area which we know, cause really because of this, it's more because of the staff that we've brought in, is in uh, Florida. And you know, one of the other areas that you know, we're a light industrial staffing agencies, but we've now also set up and we've been running um, a medical division of not of Swift International in terms of franchising, but a medical division for SI staffing. So SI mm-hmm. staffing is light industrial and it does clerical and it does medical. And so we're out there perfecting that model. Of, you know, medical is definitely one where you want to make sure you've got some experience before you get in there. And we, we understand that industry. We understand, you know, these are the registries you need to be part of. This sure. is how you target uh, the small, uh, like the, the doctor's clinics. And this is the way you need to work around working with them. This is how you work with the bigger hospitals. So we understand all that, and there's a real big opportunity, uh, especially with medical staffing in Florida, which we're also targeting. And we have clients down there that we've already, uh, okay. we can bring in. How long does it take to get open? Somebody goes through the due diligence. They mm-hmm. learn everything they need to learn. You learn about them. Everybody's happy. You're ready to get married. How long does it take them to, <laughs> how long does it take them to get open once uh, everybody's you know, through the, the formal signing and all of that stuff? From that point forward, how long usually is it to open up? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, typically what we like to do is make sure that between when you um, sign, you know, you sign off, obviously you join the franchise, uh, and then you should book in your training day, which is a, initially it's a two-day training here on site, and then we do about another sort of 10 days worth of training various times on your site with your recruiters and your other people. Typically what we like to make sure is that by the time you finish your training day, uh, you have opened the doors of your franchise within a month and you've broken even within three months. That's kind of the timeline of what, and that's what we put everything into. So we, we're trying to make sure that, yeah, we know that there's going to be investments and the, you know, you're going to have to, you know, have money more than the franchise fee to open the business, but we right. want to get you as quickly as possible to that point where the money coming in basically equals the money coming out. And, yeah, we kind of, that's what we sort of talk about. You're, de- you're basically, uh, yeah, you're developing. Up until three months. From developing, you go to emerging, and then you go, you go to up to six months. You should now be a stable uh, staffing franchise. We really the next question for you once you get to that six month for us is uh, how much faster do you want to grow? You know, do you want to stay here for a while, pause and catch your breath? Do you want to just keep going? And you know, and if you want to keep growing, do you keep growing within this franchise, or do you want to buy a second franchise territory now and start to think about that? That's typically six months after you've finished your your training. Good deal. What do you, what would you say overall is the range for the average franchise owner from an investment standpoint in a normal franchise with you guys? Okay, so if you do an investment in, uh, the we kind of split it up. So basically, we have a we have a very we've done this deliberately. We have a very low actual franchise fee. Mm-hmm. Uh, the franchise fee is only fifteen thousand dollars, but then there's a training fee, which is really what we're saying is there's a training fee of twenty thousand, so up to thirty five. The reason why we split it out is we're basically making sure you see that $20,000 investment back in your business and training. You're going to see a lot of time, a lot of time and effort from us training you, developing you. That's what we'll be doing. There's a lot of hours we put in, whether here on our site or at your site and with with various people. So that's the initial money up front. You're going to need to have probably, and just being realistic in terms of the cost of investment, somewhere between thirty dollars to $40,000 to cover you for cash flow. We've obviously, everyone's aware of the issues you can have, you know, COVID came in and, you know, it stops business. You've got to better withstand poor cash flow periods, but you also need to better have uh, money that you can put forward, you know, because we use funding, a factoring company, you need to basically better put money aside sure. for them as well. Uh, so you can cover, you know, just early early on in terms of bringing people up and 
So typically what we, we say to people is total amount of money is eighty to hundred thousand dollars. But okay. that's not in the bank. That's you need to have access to. You need to have you basically need to have in terms of to pay for things, you probably need about fifty thousand dollars that will pay the franchise fee that gets you set up and running. And then you just need to have access to whether it's a line of credit or whether you've got uh, other funds that you can access if you had to, another thirty to fifty thousand dollars depending on where you're at. As I say, uh, gallery is cheaper. Uh, Flyer is definitely cheaper in terms of running offices. Obviously, you get up to New York State, it's getting more expensive. Sure, makes sense. Well, let me give you the last word here, Tim. And just give <laughs> us the, the, you know, why franchise with us? Give me the mm. the one or two minute, you know, kind of recap, you know, elevator pitch yeah. type thing here at the end. That's great. So, hey, it's it's kind of three stages, and I'd say it's like, hey, when you want to buy a business. My argument would be is uh, right now the quickest way to make a good income from franchising is going to be through staffing. And that's just because right now the demand is high and the processes you know, in terms of making money out of it in terms of the margin and whatnot is all set up. It's well known within the industry. So first of all, choose a staffing business. The second part is staffing itself is complicated and it's very hard to do that on your own. So you want to partner up with a good, solid franchising business that, that's got systems. That's the key. We have great systems. They've been proven over the last 10, 12 years. So coming with us on board, you are buying not just the brand, but you're buying the systems and processes and everything that goes with it. But the final piece is, which I think is important, is that when you get into a franchise, you want to make sure that the people you're working with actually care about you and, in essence, have skin in the game towards your success. And that is very much us. You know, we take it personally if people fail. We don't want people failing. I'm in there, as I say, I'm as much in there as your business consultant as I am your operations uh, manager over, over it all. So we will be close with you. We will support you all the way. We'll make sure that you're fully informed. So we will be there uh, to make sure, you know, you can, there's no guarantees in this world, but as close as you're going to get, as long with taxes and death, is this Swift International staffing support, and that's what we'll do. So those are the three things that I would say: choose a staffing fran- choose, choose a staffing industry to make money, go into a franchise that's got good support, and then pick one that you know that will be there along the way. And that, that's us. Good deal. And Tim, if folks wanted to reach out to you guys, is it best to visit the website, give you a call? How do you want folks to reach out? Yeah, it's probably the, obviously the best thing if you go to the, you know, if you just type in ESI staffing, uh, it comes up and that's actually our staffing thing, but you, you know, have to buy a franchise. Uh, I, I'm more than happy if people want to send me an email and I'll, I'll put this out here and on the trust that I won't get some of these spam from other <laughs> staffing agencies having to go at me. But so, uh, and I don't know if you've got this on your website, but it's, uh, Tim.e at sistaffing.com. So yeah, I guess you can put that up on your website so people can yeah. follow it. If they send me an email, I will give them a personal call. I can regale them with stories of cricket and rugby and Savion <laughs> Blanc and Lord of the Rings and anything else about New Zealand they want, and then we can talk about how I can make them some money running a staffing franchise. Maybe throw a little hockey in there from Connecticut. Right? <laughs> That's yeah. my son. We can talk Washington Capitals. That sounds good by me. <laughs> All right, Tim. Well, folks, we are joined by Tim Aid, Operations Manager over at Swift International. Tim, thanks for your time. We really appreciate you jumping on with us. My name is John Henning. I'm your host. Uh, you can reach us online at FranchiseRadioShow.com. And thanks again, Tim. Hey, take care. Goodbye.